Today, Atlas's biggest hit to date, Persona 5 Royal, has dropped on all platforms, including the Nintendo Switch. I would be playing myself, but unfortunately I got it through Game Pass, and since so many people are trying to get it on Xbox right now, Xbox Live is completely broken, and I cannot sign into my account to play the game. Thanks, DRM. Anyways, instead, I'm going to help you guys with 10 tips to ensure that your playthrough is as smooth as butter. This is KD360, and if you like this video, make sure you stick around for future Persona 5 Royal content. Since Persona 3, socializing with others has been a key element in creating powerful personas. 5 is no different. In fact, it's much more important in this game because hanging out with others earns you some perks now depending on the rank of your confidant. A personal favorite of mine is Ryuji's instant kill perk, which lets you automatically kill an enemy you dash into if they're weak enough. This saves me so much time, especially towards the end game. Check this one out. I spent some time with this very concerned teacher and now I can go out at night after a long day's work. Thanks Kawakami. Make sure you bring a persona matching their arcana as well when you decide to hang out, as it nets you extra points when trying to rank up a confidant, ensuring that you can max as many as possible. With all the great characters in this game, it's pretty easy to ignore your social stats while trying to make on your girlfriend, but she's gonna need a nicer guy that understands how she feels in order to make things work. What do you mean I'm not a nice guy? I am a nice guy. You're just like every other woman. A superficial bit. That's where your social stats come in. Some people may need more empathy from you. Others may need to be more badass. You think the studying is for nothing? That might be the case in real life, but if you ignore your social stats in this game, you'll eventually slam into a brick wall until you have the stats to progress. Lucky for you, there's plenty of activities to help you mold yourself into the Giga Chad that you've always wanted to be but didn't have the courage to become in real life, like hitting the batting cages, studying, watching movies, or even playing video games. Some activities are more effective under certain conditions, so look out for that as well. A lot of you will probably ignore this advice, so I can say that I told you so later, but I'm gonna tell you now. You better fuse. I have to drill this into your brain since there's a boss fight in this game that's a skill check, but it's infamous for its difficulty because so many players are ill prepared for the fight in question since they keep running through the game. Fuse, fuse, fuse. The more you fuse, the easier the game will be for you. Holding on to your favorite personas is a privilege for people that made it to end game and fused until they couldn't fuse anymore. This game has a nice fuse by result feature that lets you instantly see what you can make. Make as many personas as you can so you can pass around good abilities to strengthen up your team. This lines up with my next tip. Actually look at your persona stats. Don't just throw any abilities on any persona. I've seen so many people put the wrong skills on the wrong persona because they saw how strong the ability was and just blindly tossed it on the persona. If a persona specializes in strength, you give it physical physical abilities instead of magic, it's not rocket science. One method you can use to make your persona stronger is to sacrifice another persona to the one you want to power up. Your stats are very important in this game for making it through bosses. If you play your cards right, you can throw strategy out the window and unga bunga your enemies. A nice feature that Royal has is that you can even power up your party members by taking them to a jazz bar in the new location added to Persona 5 Royal. The stats affected depend on the day they're taken, so plan accordingly and take the right person on the right days. They even get powerful skills when taken on certain days. We're not done just yet with the Velvet Room. Persona 5 Royal added on to the ability to fuse personas by creating a special event that lets you make personas even stronger. This event can randomly occur after any battle in a dungeon, and you'll get a notification when it occurs. If you fuse a persona during this event, they'll have higher stats than normal and possibly get some amazing abilities. Be careful though, if you use use one of the features of the Velvet Room too much during this event, you'll cause an accident, which causes the alarm to automatically end and you'll be kicked out. Make sure to utilize fusion alarms as much as possible to strengthen up your party and your personas. With all that being said, this is not a charity. You're gonna need money to make the magic happen. Unfortunately, this game has no magic that makes money grow on trees, so I'm gonna teach you how to make money grow on trees. If anybody tells you to get a job to earn money in this game, stop listening to them. If it's a video, turn Turn that video off now! The best way to earn money in this game is from the dungeons. There's plenty of pricey gear waiting to be sold and enemies waiting to be crushed. This is your primary source of income and you can make it even easier for yourself by obtaining perks from confidants that make it easier to farm money. There's also a lottery machine if you're into that. Now let's talk about the main dungeon that I mentioned before. In this game you'll constantly be visiting this dungeon called Mementos. There's plenty of enemies and items here if you want to grind, but the reason I mention it separately is because there's a grave mistake many Persona players make, and that is not exploring these dungeons enough. It is important that you explore as much of Mementos as possible. This will make it easier to complete side quests that you'll be given as you progress through the story. Do not ignore Mementos, or you'll pay the price for it later. 
in this game there's some amazing places that you can go to as you progress through the story, but they won't be around forever. You actually have a time limit for completing these dungeons, and failing to do so will result in a game over. The best time in my opinion to tackle a palace is the moment that it becomes available. If it's possible, I highly recommend doing the whole run in one day. That way you can save time that you can use to strengthen your team or increase your social standing. Do not wait until the last day to complete these dungeons, as it takes 3 days minimum to fully complete them. One for finding the treasure, one to make sure it materializes, and one more to finally take it. Finish these dungeons as soon as possible to save time for other important activities. With that being said, there is one thing that may prevent you from running a whole dungeon in one day, and that's SP. SP restoring items are pretty scarce in this game. This makes it a bit tougher to run through dungeons in one day, but it's very important to do so for the sake of maximizing your character's potential. One way to get SP restoring items is to use a vending machine and look for either Argonade, if that's how you pronounce it, or Water of Rebirth. They will restore 5 SP per use. Luckily a machine containing these can be found by the Yogan Jaya bathhouse, but you can only buy two of these at a time. The machine restocks them every Monday. The best way to get SP in my opinion is to work on Sojiro's confidant as he'll teach you how to make SP restoring coffee for yourself or SP restoring curry for the whole party. If you befriend the right people you can even do these activities without taking up time. I know a lot of people swear by Tai Takemi because at rank 5 you get an accessory called SP adhesive 3 which restores SP every turn but you have to get her to rank 5 to access the item and it's expensive which is why I prefer doing the Sojiro method. And for my final tip, for the love of all that is good, please back up your save file. In this game it's pretty easy to bite off more than you can chew, so I highly recommend making a backup save and updating it every 7 in-game days. This way if you run into a problem you can go back and fix it. And that does it for this guide. I'll have more in-depth guides covering these topics so make sure you subscribe and stick around if you like this game as much as I do.